الحمد لله القدير الباري ثم صلاته على المختار وبعدها كثيرة الرسول منظومة موجزة الفصول Last week, brothers and sisters, we stopped at the Hijrah, the first Hijrah that the Muslim Ummah did, which is the Hijrah to Abyssinia, the immigration to Abyssinia. So after that, Al-Imam Ibn Abi Al-Azz Al-Hanafi rahimahullah mentioned in half a line, as we said at the end of that, وَهُنَّ عَشْرٌ وَثَمَانٍ ثُمَّ قَدْ أَسْلَمَ فِي السَّادِسِ حَمْزَةُ الْأَسَدِ So he mentioned briefly that on the sixth year after the revelation, after the message of Islam, Hamza ibn Abdul Muttalib رضي الله عنه the uncle of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم and his brother by the way in Rida'a so he, that's why he was the closest uncle to him he was his uncle almost same age close to him in age and he was his brother in Rida'a means both of them were breastfed by the same woman so and today inshallah I will mention briefly the story of Islam of Hamza radiallahu anh, and then the story of Islam Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anh, which by the way the Islam of Umar ibn al-Khattab was three days after the Islam of Hamza radiallahu anhu majma'in. And just to, to understand how big it is, those two figures, those two persons accept Islam almost at the same time, it was like a shock to Quraysh. Because especially those two persons are not like others. They are completely different. So briefly the story of Islam Hamza radiallahu an, he was outside of Mecca in hunt travel. He was hunting and in some narration it was said he was he used to hunt lions and once upon a time as they mention in the history books lions exist they existed in arabia of course they don't exist anymore so whatever the the authentic narration that he was hunting hunting what it's not really important so during that time abu jahl was cursing the Prophet ﷺ very badly. And a lady heard him cursing, and the Prophet ﷺ just ignored him. He did not even respond to Abu Jahl. And he left him. So when that lady saw this happening, and after a short time she saw Hamza coming to entering Mecca, she explained what happened exactly. And Hamza, he was not a Muslim at that time, at all. He was enraged by this. How dare Abu Jahl is to curse my nephew, not only my nephew and my brother. So he came to Abu Jahl while he was sitting with his people. And Hamza just came from hunting. He had his bow around his body. And Hamza was very very strong man was if not the strongest man in Quraysh he was one of the strongest men in Quraysh so he took his bow and he he said to Abu Jahl wa ana ala he just said it like this he said you dare to curse him while I'm upon his religion he's not at that time subhanallah Allah just let him say those words. And it's all by the qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Inshallah, we will see how what we can benefit or extract some lessons of how people embrace Islam in general. Subhanallah, it's it's only the will and the qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Of course, we need to do something. We need to call people to Islam. We need to do all what we can do. But at the end, it's in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Like this, Hamza was not a Muslim. 
and he was not thinking about Islam. But just, he was enraged by how his nephew was cursed in public, and then he said those two words. أَتَسُبُّهُ وَأَنَا عَلَى دينه. And he hit Abu Jahl by his bow, and he hit him on his head. Of course, was a little, some tension, then Abu Jahl said to his people, no, it's okay. He, he knew his mistake. I cursed his nephew in a way that was, should not happen. That was not supposed to happen. So, Hamza radiallahu an, just, he said it. And again, once upon a time, people used to respect their words a lot. Especially in the Arabic atmosphere, in the Arabic literature at that time, words were much more valuable than anything else. You don't need to have agreement. If someone tells you something, that's it. Especially if that person was a noble person, that's it. His words are more valuable than anything than his life itself. The person was willing, was happy to sacrifice his life to maintain his words, to keep the value of of his words and subhanallah it is also one of the qualities of Islam that the notion of a sidq the truth it's not only to tell the truth is to start to stand behind our words when we say something we stand behind it firmly so Hamza radiallahu anh, was thinking what shall I do and then he made a dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that if it's good, make me feel happy, make me feel good towards this religion. And subhanAllah, he became one of the best Muslims. And that's why when he died as a shaheed in the battle of Uhud, the Prophet Wasallam was very, very sad. And from the moment he became a Muslim, the power of Islam completely changed and that's by the Islam of Hamza so if we put ourselves in the shoes of Quraysh the non-believers of Quraysh may Allah protect us from being in their shoes but just think about it they saw Hamza accepting Islam this day and after three days Umar ibn Khattab accepted Islam what did they feel? they feel that that's it we need to fight much much stronger than what we're doing we need to escalate the issue so and briefly the story of Islam Umar al-Khattab actually there is a famous story mentioned in the Sirah books but it's not it's not authentic so this the, the famous story that he went he wanted to kill the Prophet وسلم, and then he someone saw him on his way and told him Oh, you want to kill Muhammad because of religion? Go start with your family. Because his sister, his sister was a Muslim with her husband, Sa'id ibn Zayd ibn Amr ibn Ufayl. And I'll talk briefly about him. This story is not really authentic, so I prefer not to mention it. Because we have many other authentic narrations, which are inshallah enough to understand what's going on. So... Umar ibn al-Khattab, the first sign that shows he became a little softer towards Muslim was when the Muslims started immigrating to Abyssinia. In, in a, an authentic narration, in, in Al-Mu'jam al-Tabarani, an Abdullah ibn Amr ibn Rabi'ah, عن أمه ليلى. So this person, this Sahabi is narrating from his mother, ليلى. قالت كان عمر بن الخطاب من أشد الناس علينا في إسلامنا. She's narrating now. She's she was one of the Muslims that emigrated to Abyssinia, and she said عمر بن الخطاب was like from the strongest people against Muslims. He was very, very pro 
non-Muslims Quraysh, and he was against Islam completely in the beginning. فَلَمَّا تَهَيَّأْنَا لِلْخُرُوجِ إِلَىٰ أَرْضِ الْحَبَشَةِ When we got ready to leave to Abyssinia, فَأَتَى عُمَرَ بْنُ الْخَطَّابِ وَأَنَا عَلَىٰ بَعِيرِي Umar ibn al-Khattab was from the same sub-tribe as this lady. And he came while they are preparing. She's on the camel now, ready to leave. فَقَالْ أَيْنَ يَا أُمَّ عَبْدِ اللَّهِ Where are you going, mother of Abdullah? فَقُلْتْ آذَيْتُمُونَا فِي دِينِنَا فَنَذْهَبُ فِي أَرْضِ اللَّهِ لَا نُؤْذَى فِي عِبَادَةِ اللَّهِ She told him, you hurt us in our religion. And we just want to go in the land of Allah where we can worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala without any harm. فَقَالْ And listen to this, Umar ibn Khattab, he was the, one of the strongest people on against Muslims. He said, صَحِبَكُمُ Allah means Allah with you. Or as many people say, Allah hafiz or any other phrase that we say, مَعَ salama, something like this, صَحِبَكُمُ Allah. May Allah be with you. ثُمَّ ذَهَبْ Then he left. فَجَاءَ زَوْجِي عَامِرْ بْنُ رَبِيعَةِ Her husband came now. They are leaving. فَأَخْبَرْتُهُ بِمَا رَأَيْتُ مِنْ رِقَّةِ عُمَرْ She's saying that I told my husband how Umar was very soft. Just was like nice and gentle. And he said, at the end he said, means have a nice trip. Something like this. فَقَالْ Listen to this guys. Carefully, please. فَقَالْ تَرْجِينَ أَنْ يُسْلِمْ Subhanallah. Are you willing that he becomes a Muslim? Her husband is saying, Are you willing that he becomes a Muslim? فَقُلْتُ نَعَمْ She said, yes. After what she saw. فَقَالْ وَاللَّهِ لَا يُسْلِمْ حَتَّى يُسْلِمَ حِمَارُ الْخَطَّابِ he said, Oh Allah, he will not become a Muslim unless the donkey of his father becomes a Muslim. Subhanallah. To this level, Muslims did not expect someone like Umar becomes a Muslim. And we can see this in our life today. How many persons completely against Islam. Subhanallah, it just happened a few years ago if you heard about the, the Dutch writer and he was the right hand of the leader of the worst political party there against Islam. I forgot his name, but he's a famous Muslim now calling for Islam. And how he became a Muslim? He wanted to write a book against the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Of course, he started to research. In his process of researching, he was convinced that this is the true religion. And he became a Muslim, subhanAllah. So we should not, we should never give up of any person, no matter how evil that person is in our eyes. Allah knows what's going to happen. So Umar ibn al-Khattab, obviously after this story, something happened, again also between him and his sister and her husband. And this in Sahih al-Bukhari, عن قيس بن أبي حازم قال سمعت سعيد بن زيد بن عمر بن نفيل في مسجد الكوفة يقول So that's way after many years, after the trials and after the death, the killing of Uthman رضي الله سعيد بن زيد was sitting in the masjid of Kufa talking to people and telling them والله لقد رأيتني وَإِنَّ عُمَرَ لَمُوثِقِي عَلَى الْإِسْلَامِ قَبْلَ أَنْ يُسْلِمَ عُمَرَ وَلَوْ أَنَّ أُحُدَ نِرْفَضَّ لِلَّذِي صَنَعْتُمْ بِعُثْمَانَ لَكَانَ So he's saying, obviously the, the second part is talking about Uthman رضي الله عنه, but the first part of this hadith, which is authentic hadith in Sahih al-Bukhari, he's saying that I was bound, I was tied up by Umar ibn al-Khattab because of my Islam. To this level Umar was against Islam. And Sa'id ibn Zayd was his brother-in-law, the, the husband of his sister. But he was very harsh on Muslims. But SubhanAllah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepted the dua 
of his beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when he said, O oh Allah, make the Islam stronger, make the Islam more powerful. Allahumma a'izz al-Islam bi ahabbi hadayn al-rajulayn ilayk bi Amr ibn Hisham aw bi Umar ibn al-Khattab. Either the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make the Islam more powerful by the conversion of one of those two. Amr ibn Hisham, who is Amr ibn Hisham? He's Abu Jahl and Umar ibn Khattab. To this level, Umar ibn Khattab was equivalent to Abu Jahl against Islam. And both of them were very powerful in Quraysh and very influential. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepted. And as Abdullah ibn Umar, the narrator of this hadith says, فَكَانَ عُمَرْ أَحَبَّ الرَّجُلَيْنِ إِلَى اللَّهِ So he's saying that Umar, my father, was more beloved to Allah than Abu Jahl. So Umar ibn Khattab became a Muslim now and Hamza became a Muslim. So as, as I said earlier, it became dangerous now for Quraysh. That's why they started escalating. And inshallah, we will talk next week about what happened after that, which is Hisar al-Muslimin, the boycott of Muslims and the siege for Muslims in a place called Shi'b Abi Talib. In, in, in a certain place, inshallah, we'll talk in, with more details about what happened. But just now to understand what, what's the mechanism of a person accepting Islam? Is it just argument? Is it just to prove that Islam is true? Of course not. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in many places in the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in fact mentioned about Fir'aun and his people. One of the worst nations ever in human history. He said, وَجَحَدُوا بِهَا وَاسْتَيْقَنَتْهَا أَنفُسُهُمْ ظُلْمًا وَعُلُوًّا They denied the truth while they know inside themselves وَاسْتَيْقَنَتْهَا أَنفُسُهُمْ they know it's the truth, for sure. They 100% they know this is the truth. But why they denied it? Why they reject, rejected the truth? ظُلْمًا وَعُلُوًّا There are many other reasons beyond the logical reasons or the, the proof. The, you, you present in any way you want to present to any people. Not only presenting correctly and convincing people will cause them to accept Islam at all. And as Ibrahim alayhi salam said to his people, he convinced them very well when he destroyed the, the, the idols and he left the biggest one. And when they came and he, they said, who did this? That's the, the biggest one destroyed all others. They ask them if they can speak they for a moment they went back to reality like that's true What's, how come then they flipped their their minds upside down you know they cannot speak so Ibrahim alayhi salam said an important phrase. Qala innama attakhadtum min duni allahi awthanam mawadda tabaynikum fil hayati dunya. Because of the love and the relationship between you, the social reasons, and it's one of the strongest reasons that prevent people from accepting Islam. The social pressure, the social networking, it's hard to expect people, even if they are convinced that Islam is a true religion, to convince them to break up from all their social life and abandon all their old friends or most of their families and become Muslims, they will think 100 times before moving forward. And subhanAllah, we see this many times happening. And as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and I will end with this, two verses. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in Surah Yunus, 
talking to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. وَلَوْ شَاءَ رَبُّكَ لَآمَنَ مَنْ فِي الْأَرْضِ كُلُّهُمْ جَمِيعًا If your Lord wills, all humans on earth will be Muslims. أَفَأَنْتَ تُكْرِهُ النَّاسَ حَتَّى يَكُونُوا مُؤْمِنِينَ Are you forcing people to become Muslims? وَمَا كَانَ لِنَفْسٍ أَنْ تُؤْمِنَ إِلَّا بِإِذْنِ اللَّهِ وَيَجْعَلُ الرِّجْسَ عَلَى الَّذِينَ لَا يَعْقِلُونَ there is no soul will accept Islam without the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the other ayah in Surah Al-An'am, it's also one of the strongest ayat in, in this topic. وَلَوْ أَنَّنَا نَزَّلْنَا إِلَيْهِمُ الْمَلَائِكَةِ وَكَلَّمَهُمُ الْمَوْتَ وَحَشَرْنَا عَلَيْهِمْ كُلَّ شَيْءٍ قُبُلًا مَا كَانُوا لِيُؤْمِنُوا إِلَّا أَنْ يَشَاءَ الله. Very direct and clear message to us and to anyone surprised by why people don't accept Islam sometimes while it's very clear, very obvious. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says here, just imagine to what point. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends angels down to those non-believers, and the dead people talk to them. Obviously, talk to them means tell them what they have faced. Tell them their reality. And we bring everything they are going to face in front of them right now to see it. Is there any convincing argument more than this? If those non-believers see the angels and listen to the dead people, and they see everything in front of them right now. There should be no reason to reject Islam. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, مَا كَانُوا لِيُؤْمِنُوا إِلَّا أَنْ يَشَاءَ اللَّهِ They will not believe unless Allah wills. وَلَكِنَّ أَكْثَرَهُمْ يَجْهَلُونَ But most of them, most of mankind, they act ignorantly. يجهلون. So I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us firm on Islam and help us to call people to Islam. Jazakumullah khair.